speaking of lesbians, the whole scene where like Selena was trying to flirt with her and be all up on her so she could steal the phone with her, like I get it and what it was for, but I also don't think Batwoman would ever like fall for something like that. Is Batwoman smart? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Welcome back to another relaunch. I am, oh, I am, oh, because he he guest starred in a book I'm going to be talking about later. Um, Mr. Terrific. Oh, okay, nice. And I am James Howlett, a.k.a. Logan, a.k.a. Wolverine. Oh, okay. A Boom. Action. I love you know. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I had a long week and, um... I was going to go to the beach this weekend because it was supposed to be warm, but it's not like looking that way. So, <laughs> okay. I think, gonna stay. <laughs> I think I was going to stay in and play video games. Yeah. I've been replaying um, King Kingdom Hearts right now because I bought the third one when it came out and never beat it. <laughs> I never played it. And I'm like, oh. you know what? Let me go back and replay the first and second and finally beat the third. I have never played a Kingdom Hearts game ever. I can't tell you. Oh, anything. wow. Wrong, or like what it's about, but well, I see you have Xbox, right? and all that stuff. Yes. Okay, it's a PlayStation exclusive. Oh, it's not meant for me then. No. Yeah. That's fine. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah, that's my plan. Kicking it, playing video yeah. games. I love that. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you? <laughs> How are you? Um, I'm fine. I I redid my closet. The other day, um, I like turned okay. it over, put all the sweaters like in the back corner, bought the shorts and stuff. I, I've been like buying a lot of new clothes. Um, I think by, by the time this comes out, we will officially be two weeks from my birthday. And so I've just been like buying some outfits. And as I was going through, I realized I hadn't really done anything with my closet since like the pandemic. And so I just had like a lot of really old clothes in there. So I was like, oh, I can throw these out. And I was getting rid of stuff. And I was like, oh, wow, like half my wardrobe's gone. So then I just went and bought more clothes. So we're going to see how that goes. I mean, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this isn't good. Um, but, you know, we're going to see how that works out. And I'm just very excited. That means I'm definitely going to be outside this summer, I guess. <laughs> I was like, Absolutely. <laughs> that's what the summer's for. Okay. Um, go outside. Go outside. Yeah, good times. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get to these updates of the week. And first up, um, I want to let everybody know about some heartbreaking news for me and anybody else out there who were looking forward to a Marvel MMO. But the planned Marvel multi, <laughs> massively multiplayer online game that was going to come from the DC Universe developers, Daybreak, has been canceled. Now, there were some... Um, rumors originally that Marvel was coming out with a new MMO RPG for consoles and that uh, no one was really like getting any details about it but the uh, Daybreak Studios said that they were the, behind the the development team working on the game. Now I'm not sure if did you play DC Universe online? Oh yeah. I still do sometimes. Yeah. I like redownload it and yeah. make more characters. I pop in the same. I keep making characters <laughs> because it's that's like always the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> so you just make a bunch of different ones and then like they would add powers. Um, Cause I'll never forget when the game first started, it had a very like basic aspect. You had fire abilities, water abilities, whatever. Then they started adding like celestial and then like the technology and the healing. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is getting hot. Quantum. So, yeah. Yeah. The quantum was it. I was always like yeah. into the, the powers that like do a little bit of damage but also still heal. So I loved like celestial quantum and the water powers. Of course you like the water. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it when they added the the lantern expansions and uh, mm -hmm. the quantum powers and stuff. <laughs> and give it to me. <laughs> um but yeah, I was looking forward to a Marvel, you know, MMO. Um I feel like that's such an open lane that they haven't really tapped into yet that you would think would be big because of the popularity of superheroes right now. Um, you would think that they would really want to mine the video games as well and really tap into 
letting people create their own characters and live you in know, this universe. You know, I always go back and forth with the video games because, like, I do want them. And I think I want them bad and I want them quickly. But it's like, at the same time, I just think about the ones that have gotten announced and that we're still waiting on and, like, the way that these games are happening and just, like, getting released. It's like, it's getting bad. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. Although Guardians yeah. was a hit. If you haven't played the Guardians game, you should play that. That's good. Yeah. And people out there who have a PlayStation, I think that the Guardians game soon will be free on PlayStation Plus. So definitely check that out. Um, so the Blue Beetle costume set photos had just recently leaked. Mm. I don't want to even say leaked. It looked like they were kind of like officially out. <laughs> okay, was there was pretty... like a video that came out a few hours ago. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I was like, are they just letting everybody on set now? Or what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of times when they are testing a lot of that stuff, they just kind of like let it happen. Um, but the Blue Beetle costume looks fantastic. I am really kind of excited for the movie. No, you and I have talked about Blue Beetle before and how he can be a huge character if if DC really just lets him mm-hmm. do that. Right. Like that. He is the the fifth pillar. That's what he could be. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. It was interesting because I saw um, when the video got released, I saw some people making comments under it. And they were like, oh, this is giving like Tom Holland Spider-Man energy. But I was like, I don't know. I kind of, that's what you think of when you think of Blue Beetle too a little bit. He, I don't think it in a bad way it's like the mold of that character the like kind of like fun plucky superhero but i was like i think that's also spider-man the peter parker yeah you know what i'm saying but i like think that's a good thing for his character because that's what attaches people to him and makes them want to see him more people love jaime he is super popular look at kamala okay that that peter parker motif is just very popular and it works apparently (laughs) <laughs> I mean, good for, them. good for them. I think Jaime is going to be a pretty big character, and I hope that they really push him. I'm excited for that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like the, I can't uh, remember his name right now, but the actor who's going to be playing him, he seems super excited about it. And it was very, like, hype that people were loving the costume. And the costume looked good. Yeah, yeah. And I think, like, on in post, they'll probably have some stuff where they fix up, like, some of it while it's moving or whatever, but I think it looks fantastic. Are you a fan of the more practical costumes versus like a CGI look? Um, I guess it depends on who's doing the CGI. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> oh no. And the actor's name was uh, Zolo, uh, Zolo Marandunia. Apologies if I mispronounced that, but he's going to be playing. Blue Beetle. Um, But speaking of CGI costumes, we saw the Thor Love and Thunder trailer this past week. And um, wow. What a lot of Thor. (laughs) A A whole lot lot of Thor. Thor. A lot of Thor. In more more ways than one. Um, What'd you think? I was into it. I mean, I didn't... Yeah. You know... I really enjoy um, Taika and like his direct- directing style, and I've enjoyed everything I've seen. And I like kind of enjoy the whole comedic thing of Thor. I think Jay looks great. I'm excited to see Valkyrie. I don't know. I guess I'm just like I. Ex- it's giving what I expected it to give, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so like I'm pleased yeah. with that. You know, I I I like Ragnarok as a movie, but I do kind of miss the more like serious tone of Thor, and I wish that there was a little bit more of that in the films, but... I guess I don't, because the first two were just like really bad to me. I went back and watched the Thor films a while ago, um, mm. and I actually fell asleep on Dark World. Well, yeah. <laughs> that one is that one. <laughs> it's just yeah. like... Yeah, serious Thor can be cool, but it's like, it wasn't working. Make me laugh. It wasn't working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I don't want to happen is I don't want this to become like Guardians 2, though, because Guardians 2 was more of the same, which, in my opinion, was worse. I think the difference in that is that the directors, one is funny and one mm-hmm. is not. <laughs> T. <laughs> <laughs> you, that is accurate, yeah. Um I I thought that the trailer looked very cool. I thought that Jane looked really cool. Um, 
her wig looked real big on her head. <laughs> so, <sometimes. laughs> it just looked really big on her head. Um, I thought that it was cool when she was in the one pose where uh, she was in like a a kind of these columns that were on the outside of her, and they had all the different like gods and mm-hmm. basically the aspects that we've talked about before about Marvel Cosmic. And um, I saw Infinity and Death and Eon, which Eon is the one who creates the uh, quantum bands that are given to Quasar. So I thought that was pretty cool. Maybe we might get him eventually. Um, I thought that... I think... I hope so. Oh, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) You don't know these things. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the trailer was pretty interesting. I would definitely um, recommend watching the trailer. I would definitely recommend watching the movie. I'm not super hype for it, I will admit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess, I, I, I don't know. I don't think I'm super hype, but like I'm excited to go and see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget the release date for this movie. I'm not sure if it was pushed back or not. Um. Oh no, it's July, July seventh. Oh, that's right. It's very right soon. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I think it's. I think it'll be interesting. I'm not sure. It, do you think Thor's gonna make it out of this? Yeah. Odinson. Yes. Okay. I think they're gonna. You'll you know. Be- I think they're going to build Hemsworth for <laughs> as much as they can. <laughs> and, like, for real, you know, no no shade to him, but, like, a lot of this other stuff he does doesn't really do that well, so I'd probably keep being Thor if they're going to let me. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, they said that the movie, I'm not sure if it'll be a continuation of the storyline, but they said that the movie is going to follow Jane's story of how she got the hammer and... uh you know, dealing with her cancer and everything, but who knows how long that will keep her in the MCU, or if that means that by the end of this movie, she will be gone. Natalie Portman because, I mean, said, look, y'all got me for one movie. <laughs> 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 and then I'm going back home. <laughs> get your check, she, girl. I get it. <laughs> she was like, I don't really care, but no. It'll, I actually will be interesting to see if she was sticks around for long. I mean, because, you know, Jane Thor is pretty cool. And, like, a lot of yeah. people like her. I was actually talking to a friend about her the other day because he's really into her as Valkyrie. And I was like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I was trying to get with it in the beginning, but it has slowly but surely, like, it just doesn't work for me. And I think a problem with it is that there are just kind of too many Valkyries. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know about, like, the main one, the blonde chick. Um, then we they've introduced, like, Runa into the comics. They've introduced a version of Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie into the comics. And, like, Danny's a Valkyrie at time. Like, there's so many. I feel as though it kind of, like, takes away from Jane's spot in it. Where it's like, yes, there might only be one Thor, but, like, there's also only one Jane Thor. And it's like that feels a little bit more powerful, but he prefers her weapon as Valkyrie, the little all thing that turns into a bunch of stuff. So he's like, even if Jane becomes Thor again in the comics, he's like, I want her to keep the all weapon. The all weapon is kind of cool, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Like, what do you do? It's cool. <laughs> it, just look, it looks really cool. I like the way that she like uses it. So it got it's me. Got, she'll be back to Thor, and then all will be right in the world. Yeah, we'll see what happens with her in this movie. If she's going to be sticking around in the MCU, if they're going to follow her storyline and she ends up, you know, becoming Valkyrie at the end of it, who knows? Um, I know that the Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie was said to be king of Asgard now and that we were going to find out um, if she had a girlfriend or like a queen. Mm. Saying that that's what they were going to do. My theory is her queen is going to be the like a version of the like um Brunhild that Valkyrie mm-hmm. okay wink wink nod nod to like the people from I don't really like Brunhild I'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> <laughs> that's fair I don't really see it bro. when it comes to the girls of Asgard Enchantress Sif 
and Lorelai are hot. And when it comes to Valkyries, I like Danny. I'm sorry. I like her in the role. I'm going to talk about that later, too. But that's just what it is. I think Danny's pretty cool in that role too. It really, it really lets her break out. <laughs> It'd be really cool. <laughs> like, where will we go? Like, I know she, I, she's still dead in the comics, but it's like whatever. Like, I don't ever need to see her again, like ever. Mm-hmm. But like, she's the Valkyrie or whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Next. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Danny in there and let her really like become like head Valkyrie. That'd be hot. I liked her Valkyrie costume in that well, where of the realms. I'm sorry, it's cool. <laughs> it's good. Shout out to Dodderman. Was that his design? Or was that someone else's? And has she worn that before? No, she's worn it before, I think. I have to go back and look at it. Cause she wore she's worn a, like a lot of different versions of the Valkyrie outfit, obviously. Mm. Um, but you're talking about the brown one? Yeah. No, I think that might have been an original. The other one she has is usually black. Okay. She should wear that one more often. It was hot. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, well then check out that trailer, y'all. Uh, let's go ahead and take a break and then we'll come right back. Cool. All right, everyone. Welcome back for another comic. It's that time, and we're gonna start off, it was actually a lot of books that came out this week. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with a couple of them. You first up on the list is Devil's Reign Omega number one. I didn't even know Devil's Reign was still going on. So tell me what's happening. Yeah. So you know how like everything has been kind of pushed back uh-huh. over at Marvel, at least, at least it's over there. I'm, the DC books have really been pushed back, but um, mm-hmm. this had been pushed back and it finally came out. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Since you know, Devil's Reign ended like a while ago. This was supposed to be the end cap for um, Devil's Reign that kind of launched everything coming out of it afterwards. And there were three separate stories in here. Uh, the first was Fall and Rise, written by Chip Zdarsky, uh, with art by Rafael de la Torre. And the second was Mayor for Hire, which was written by uh, Anthony Barnes, mm-hmm. and art by uh, Guillermo Santa. And the last was Cleaning House, and that was uh, written by Jim Zub, and shout out to him and art by Luciano uh, Vecchio. <clears throat> now, uh, the first story written by Chip Zdarsky was pretty much just the funeral for Matt Murdock, which is actually Mike Murdock. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a question. You've read some Daredevil stuff previously, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Do people just, like, automatically confuse the two of them? Like, <laughs> he had an open casket funeral for... <laughs> Mike, mm-hmm. quote unquote, Mike Murdoch. Yeah. They really look the same. Like, <laughs> where no <laughs> one's gonna be that. I think it's supposed to be like an identical thing. Like, there's no difference. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> whatever, I guess. Um, and they have this whole a ceremony for Matt. Everyone thinks that Matt Murdoch is dead, but it's actually Mike. Um, uh, Jessica Jessica Jones finds out that the one of the kids who was Purple Man's kid, mm-hmm. um, he's still like out there. He's like in one of the foster care systems, and she's like, okay, well maybe we can go see something going on with that and help him out. Luke Cage has become mayor, but he still like is uh, Luke Cage, so he's willing to like jump out there and and go rescue some stuff. Um, he meets up with Daredevil and is like, what's going on? I know that you are Matt. Like, I know that. Why are you um, letting everyone believe that Matt Murdock is dead? And Daredevil is like, I uh, think that this is for the best. What I'm doing right now is best for Matt to stay dead. Daredevil and Elektra are going to go take down the hand. Um, and then before things get crazy, um, they before, like, you know, the tension between these two people start to escalate because they have disagreements on what's should be happening next uh they go and stop some bank robbers and luke cage is like you know i'm still able to go out there and be a superhero even though i'm the mayor but um that doesn't actually go the way that he thinks it's supposed to go because the thunderbolts who were like the evil thunderbolts that uh fisk was using Mm -hmm. they are the ones who kind of also kind of stop the bank robbers but they are uh being very very rude about everything and uh they say you know 
you can't attack a like a civilian. You can't attack a, a regular civilian. You're the mayor. Um, but we could do whatever you want. Remember, vigilantes are free to do. <laughs> that is funny. He kind of got Luke Cage because he kind of sat there for a bit. It was like, okay, this isn't going to be anything yeah. like I thought it was going to be as being mayor. Um, so he's, he gets the idea that he basically wants to change the Thunderbolts thing because these guys are running around being bad vigilantes, but he remembers that the Thunderbolts, which he was a part of back in the day, um, were like reformed people who actually ended up liking being heroes and trying to do the good thing. Um, so later on, Jessica ends up meeting up with one of the kids of Kill... Not Kill Munker, um, Kill Grave. Purple Man. Purple, Purple Man. And basically, I think she's going to end up fostering him. He's a young kid, mm. a young little black boy. Um, he's, she's like, you know, don't use your powers on people. Your dad used that on me, and like that completely changed my life. You shouldn't be taking away people's free will because he was using it on one of the women who was the foster mom for him. Like, he may go take a walk because he like her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it looks so mean. Um, shout out to Jessica <laughs> building her all her little black kids. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that uh, because he shows up back at Luke's house. She's like, you know, meet him. We have a new addition to the house. Um, Luke goes on to try to recruit Monica Rambo, Spectrum, to be the leader for his new Thunderbolts team. And she tells him, hell no. Um, mm. <laughs> I know I know exactly how this is going to go. And I know that you want me to be the because he came to her and asked her to be the leader of the Thunderbolts like he was you know, her his first pick was her and she's like I know that you want me to be the leader because you want me to be the face of this and I'm not gonna do this because the minute I don't want to do something and it goes wrong I'm being gonna, gonna be painted as the angry black woman and mm. uh, I'm not gonna fall for this right now like I'm just gonna good luck with what you're doing <laughs> and I'll see you later and then she leaves um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with her in Thunderbolts because I know that she's in that book. So yeah. uh, <clears throat> I'm definitely going to be following her after that. So yeah, this was just the issue kind of setting up and springboarding everyone afterwards. It looks like uh, Luke Cage is going to be the mayor of Hell's Kitchen. So he'll be, you know, doing yeah. stuff over there. Now with yeah. you'll see him probably pop up more within the street levels characters as Mayor Luke Cage. Mm. I guess that's nice. I guess that's a nice little like journey for him to be mayor. It makes yeah. sense for his character. So good for him. Yeah. What One of his security issue? guards is um, Iron Fist, Danny Rand. No, not Iron Fist. Oh, but Danny. I don't need him. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I would give the the entire thing overall a four out of five. Okay. I think it was a it was a really cool like springboarder springboarding issue. For everything to follow after for these characters. Luke Cage to me is a character that can be interesting, but his motif and like his like his lane is kind of old. <laughs> so yeah. I think that like <laughs> evolving him into a mayor is great for him because he can't be Power Man out here forever, you know. Okay. After certain so, days, the knees stop working. Exactly. So let's move that on to <laughs> him being mayor. Okay. Well that's cool. Shout and, out to and I have my thing. <clears throat> And shout out to Devil's Reign for now, I guess, officially being over. Yes, now it's done. Okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> uh, next up on our list is Aquaman number four. That comes from Brandon Thomas, Chuck Kim, and Sam Barizi. And, um, excuse me, Basiri. And, you know, so this book has been announced to be canceled at, at issue six, I believe. And it's oh, no. really sad because you can always tell when a writer has like a long form story going and like they're trying to build to something and you can tell like when it kind of hits the point of like, okay, this is like the middle of our story and like I'm finishing off this and like also setting up stuff for the future. And like that's very much what this issue is. And it's like crazy because it's also extremely enjoyable. This has definitely been my favorite issue of the series so far. It's like, oh wow. This entire book has been a political spy thriller type of situation set on the backdrop of Atlantis. There are all these Atlantean sleeper agents who are like going to be activated to destroy people on the surface world and they are like done through this mysterious magic crystal that Scavenger now has a hold of and that's where we end up last issue. And like there's this big fight going on. Manta comes out to help um, Jackson and it's Batman, I'm not Batman, Batwoman and 
Oh. What's that man's name? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> 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 it's uh, Batwoman and Jackson and like Arthur like fighting him and they're all working together and you know just coming up to the plot and then later on in the book we get the entire aqua family together so it's arthur jackson tula garth mara and even andy's there and they're just talking about everything that's going on oh. and just like revealing what's been happening and then manta comes in and manta's like you know i'm here on this as well i can also help and it's just like a lot of really good character moments happening there's a scene where they're fighting scavenger and scavenger kind of has manta on the ropes and jackson jumps in and he's like hold on that's still my father you can't be doing that to him now like he's a bad guy but <laughs> <chill out>. <laughs> <laughs> and like he uses his um he uses his powers of aquanesis he um grabs a bunch of like the lids on the top of the sewers and he starts like hitting um scavenger with them oh. and it's like a really dope okay. scene and he's like yeah are we done now and just really having those moments of him and just a really fun issue by the end of it all a bunch of the ages have been activated and they blow up a meeting at the un where they were having trying to get some of the zebelians you know to talk to the service people like chill out and so now we get to that at the end of the issue mr terrific pops up because he is going to help them on finding the rest of the sleeper agents all across the world and like using the ocean. So it's like really been a fun issue. We've had a lot of guest stars. Again, Batwoman showed up last issue. She was here, then she left. Mrs. Terrific's here. We're seeing a lot more stuff of Atlantis and Atlantean politics. I think this is one of the first times where we've really gotten the entire like Aqua family and a story together. Usually one person's gone, it's Garth. But um, he's actually here <laughs> this time as well. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> again. So I do miss Lorena though. They need to hurry up and find a way to bring her back too. But like that's been cool. And then like even seeing Manta again. Manta is the type of character I think I've talked about it before. Whenever he sees Arthur, it's very much like, Oh, I'm just here to kill you. I do not like you. I'm not doing this. But in this aspect of Jackson now, I think there was this kind of change in him. He saw his son underneath his enemy. And it's like, even though he didn't necessarily care about him, it's still kind of like, you still my son, I still care a little bit. And so he's dealing with that. And you got Jackson dealing with that. It's just a lot of really interesting dynamics going on and shifting and forming. And it's also really nice to see how much they consider Jackson like a part of the Aqua family. There's never a point in time where somebody's like, no, that's my brother. That's like, he's here. We are here for him. And like, that's just really cool to see. So that's that. All in all. I know Mara, Mara was shutting it down for him. <laughs> okay, like she's like, period. That's my You're not gonna mess with him. And like, and that's the, that's the energy I love. They always give him that, and so that's cool to see. Um, I th honestly, uh, this will probably be a four out of five issue for me. Like I said, my favorite one of the series. I think it's really good. It's again, you see, like there are some things that they're trying to plan for the future. I don't know what Jackson's future is going to be once this book ends. Of course, he's a part of Dark Crisis. He'll probably be on like a Justice League. I don't see them stopping him being Aquaman anytime soon. I think that's like up and stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So no way to go back now. Yeah, not at all. And that's that. So before I get to the last book of the week that I was going to discuss, um, you know, I wanted to give a couple mentions out to some other titles. Moon Knight 11 was out. Swamp Thing 11 was out. Action Comics 1043 is out. That always continues to be a really good time. I know they got like Fantastic. a hard decision. They got to make at the end of that. And I've also been picking up this new book, um, Bloodstained Teeth. Hold on. I, need to, I just need to make sure everyone knows that the decision that needs to be made there is to save Apollo. The <laughs> end of the issue is either they either go and save Apollo or save Enchantress. I'm going to say save Apollo. If you've been reading Action Comics, then you know who these characters are. So let us know if you guys would save Apollo or save Enchantress. And then be sure to check back for the next issue to find out who gets saved. And yes. so, and then um, another book that I've been reading was Bloodstained Teeth. The second issue of that came out this week, and it's 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 a vampire story. So I was like, going to read it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I heard that it's title. Like, it's like, oh, this is a vampire. It's like a, it's like a vampire psychological thriller. This guy has gotten into the business of turning humans into vampires and like selling them off to people on the black market and doing other things with him. And so now like some other vampires have found out and they're trying to stop him. And so it's just like really cool. Christian Ward um, writes it. He's like a really dope artist. He does the cover as well. And it's drawn by uh, this guy named uh, Kirk Reynolds, I want to say, Patrick Reynolds. Um, cool, it's it's like a dope book. I'm into it, it's vampires. But pick those up, okay. check them out, let them know. 
Um, and the final book of, book of the week was a new number one, and that's Legion of X number one, and that comes from Simon Spurrier and Jan Basil Dua. Now, this is like one of the big new X books. It's the continuation of Spurrier's Way of X with Bob Quinn, and it's Nightcrawler has formed his little team of people. They're basically now cops of Krakoa. They're not calling themselves cops, but they're basically cops. And they're like going around and like stopping different type of things that are happening. Like there's a mutant who's possessing people. So they're like, oh, we got a possession. We got to find, you know, like going into stuff like that. Um, we see people like Pixie on the team, Juggernaut's there and on the island now. Forget Me Not, who's a character that Spurrier introduced back in his X-Force run um, and lost who was introduced back in Way of X. She's also on the crew. So they're some of the ones going around doing the missions, which is fun to see. While that's going on, Nightcrawler is meeting with Araco, um, and there is this one Araki mutant, Orange Satera. Satera, I got to go back and look at the name. It's a giant eyeball. And <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, the Aura Serena or whatever. Yes, Aura Serena, that's the one. Um, and so Aura is basically telling Nightcrawler about the gods and how like the Iraqi do gods and like uh, how they used to have them and but the gods have to prove themselves worthy enough for the Iraqi to worship them. So they'll like summon the god or can summon the god up and then they'll fight the Iraqi. <laughs> it's, okay. like, it's like they'll fight them it's so basically like you know obviously if the god wins it's like okay you know we can worship you but if not it's like you pumped out so then they get the choice of like do you surrender what do you want to do and then or like looks at them and they disappear or like get destroyed we don't really know what happens we just know that or is like i see you and it's like boom and so basically now there's a rogue god who has apparently gone to kakoa and or wants nightcrawler's team to look for them also, while that's going on, you have Legion, <laughs> who is meeting with... Jeez, okay. <laughs> okay. While that's going I'm on, you have... What's this issue? <laughs> oh, man, it was only, like, 30-something pages, but there was... And so I'm going to talk about that. There's, like, Legion going on, and he is attached to, like, the altar, which is this Mindscape place that he's created on planet Araco. And in this space, we also see Blindfold. She has um, rejected the choice to get her body back because she says when she was like in her body, her powers were constantly causing her to see things. And like, she was always having like these fits, she said, but here as she is existing as like in this astral psychic energy place, she feels at peace and she feels calm. And like, that's how she wants to live. And so she's meeting with Nightcrawler in that aspect. And like, they're, I mean, not Nightcrawler, Legion in that aspect. And they're like kissing and talking about their love and all of that. Also, she's seeing things so we find out child. I think it's supposed to be like she's one of the older Academy X kids so she's supposed to be, we'll be like 20, 21 how old is Lisa? Lisa named 30? I think maybe they want him to be like 26 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know mm. I don't Okay. <laughs> but it's whatever. You know, that's what that's going. Um, but nonetheless, also another thing is happening in this book. We find out that Nimrod has killed Warlock's father. King. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The Magus? Yes. Um, he has killed him. There's like a page of him like punching him through the chest. It's very dramatic and he's telling Warlock about that. And you know, they're having like some conversations about the dad and all that stuff. And so then by the end of the issue, we um get to Nightcrawler and because throughout the issue, Nightcrawler has been meeting with one of the Iraqi mutants named Weapless Zen. She's gonna help him on the mission to find the rogue god. And they talk about like her powers and her mutant power is actually passive passive, and that's why they call her weaponless. So she but she still uses swords. And it, it, I will say this issue did like a really good job at like Iraqi culture. And I think I enjoy everything about them and like kind of seeing how they live and like what they cultivate. And just even the ones compared to X-Men Red, where we saw kind of like the painters or the art village of the Araco place. It's like, it's really cool to see all these things and how it's coming about. I will say, I feel like it takes away from Krakoan culture though. I feel like that hasn't been cultivated in like, um, expanded enough so now it's like oh we just get in Morocco and so I don't care as much about as them that's the downside but nonetheless um, we meet I mean nobody's nobody's even there <laughs> yeah I most of the books don't even take place on Kakoa <laughs> 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 
Um, and so by the end of the book, we are introduced to another new character who is like a god. She's like living on the psychic plane. She was the one that um, was designed by Jamie McKelvey. She's like all white. She has like an accent, which I wasn't expecting. She's calling them like gov and stuff like that. So okay, it's like English. that was... Yeah, that was really interesting. But her name is Mother Righteous. She's like pops up. And so she talks about, you know, I'm here to trade things and like, let's find out, you know, I'm in the magic. I do magic and I do gods and I'm here and that. So that was Legion of Vex. There was a lot going on, like a whole lot going on. And I think that was probably my biggest takeaway. I will say the art was like really nice. I think Basil Dua like shines with action and like movement scene. I think ever since I've read anything from her, like that uh, Winter Guard miniseries that she did, like that the fight really like the art in that. Um, and I think some the one of the biggest issues I had with her was her faces, and I think that's like pretty good here. Um, it could be because we don't really stay on anyone's face for too long to really like get into it because they're like I said there's a lot of movement and stuff but like it just works it's very action oriented again I like all of the stuff with the Iraqi I do feel like we were kind of like stumbling through the narrative like with so many twists and turns and so much going on so it was hard to kind of find a focus of the story at times it felt like there's a lot going on but not anything going on so I hope that that was more so just like a first issue sowing the seeds type of thing it's like okay mm. kind of let you know like all the things this book will delve into but for this first arc well by the second issue we're going to show you what we're going to be doing mostly here so that was that all in all i'd probably give this like a three out of five i think it's a solid start to the book and i do recommend it for anyone who's enjoying krakoa and Araco and like all of that stuff i think the characters are interesting nightcrawler i like pixie i like lost i'm still kind of like and eh. legion i do like blindfold is like and eh. Um, the Rocky that are in it is dope. Aura, the eyeball is freaking me out. I'm into it. Weapon the Zen, she's a hot girl. She's got swords. Who doesn't love that? I'm gonna stick around for a little bit. Is it a mini series or is it an ongoing? I think it's an ongoing. Oh, okay. They haven't said for sure, but you never know. Uh, we'll also see because you know these paper shortages. Who knows when the second issue will come out? Yeah. Right. And I gotta change. It. But okay. Those were the books of the week. You guys let us know what you read and what you were into, what you liked. Again, let us know if you would save Apollo or Enchantress. You'd save Enchantress. And let's go exactly. on. Exactly. And then we'll oh, well, on. before we before we before we take a break, I just wanted to remind everyone that we'll be starting a book club next week and mm -hmm. uh, we'll be reading Jason Aaron's Thor. So first up, I think we're going to be reading the first three issues of um Thor the God of Thunder so uh, be on the lookout next week when we'll be checking back on that and also pay attention to the comments below because then I'll keep the schedule and stuff of what we'll be reading for that so I'm excited to be starting the book club with everybody and reading some Thor this is my first time reading some of this I think I've only read like the first issue remember when a long time ago Marvel gave everybody the first issues of like all their comics for free yeah, that was a good time. I downloaded, I downloaded all that stuff. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I think I only read the first issue. So this would be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a break. Ooh. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. And this week we are doing another watch of the newest dc animated movie this is catwoman hunted and yes and yeah this was uh this was written by uh greg weissman and um it has uh elizabeth giles as a, the voice of selena kyle as is well as gillis? gillis i've heard it said I, that. I don't know apologies, Liz apologies. Call into the show. Yes. No. <laughs> Let us know. Um, Stephanie Beatrice, Jonathan Banks, Stephen Bloom, Lauren Cohen, um, Jonathan Banks, Kirby Howell Baptiste, who was uh, recently on an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, um, Kelly Hugh, iconic, who did the voice of uh, Cheshire. And did you know she was also um, Lady Death Strike in X2? Kelly Hugh, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that. The nails, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that fight scene. She like when uh, Wolverine stabbed her, and then she like pulled herself up and like pulled the things out. And she <laughs> <little step>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, who was Lauren Cohen? 
Uh, Lauren Corn was um, Julia Pennyworth. Oh, okay. I guess I do hear that now. Yeah, that's the girl. That's the one from uh, The Walking Dead, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. She was um, also in the DCEU already as Martha. Oh, Martha Wayne. Yeah. No. Oh. Getting checked somehow. So yeah. Um, before we get started into like the synopsis of it all, what did you think? Oh, I didn't like this. You didn't like it? Oh no. <laughs> I will say, I, I, though I will say, I'm a little biased. I didn't realize this was an anime, and um, I'm not. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? <laughs> I'm not really a fan of that. I um, realized <laughs> okay the last few years. So I was like, once I saw that, I was kind of like, oh whatever. Um, I think Liz as Catwoman was like fun. And she gave you, like, the saucy, kind of sultry Selena that a lot of people expect. But so one thing that I've noticed about Selena is that, like, yes, she very much does embrace, like, the sultry, sexy, uh, little femme fatale thing, plays the game. But at the same time, like, she also knows it's a game. And I think that the real Selena, like, tends to peel it back, like, when need be. And I feel like this one, that was just, like, always on. Although I will say, I, I, and even like the times when it broke, it didn't really feel believable. Like I think one of the moments was like when um, Batwoman ugh, called her cat, and she like freaked out her. She was like, "Don't call me cat." And it was yeah. just like, oh. <laughs> I was like, "What's going, on, girl? Damn!" <laughs> <laughs> but I also, I also said only he can call her that. And it's just like, girl, <laughs> my, my man, my man. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man, my man, my man. <laughs> it's just like, okay, be calm. But nonetheless, I also didn't really enjoy the Batwoman voice actress. Mm. I don't know what it was about her, but she was irking my But maybe because Batwoman's kind of irky. I don't really like Batwoman. But, I mean, the lady sounded like a lesbian to me, so... <laughs> <laughs> It was giving lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what, that's what we were hoping for. <laughs> that's what I hoped that they was going for. And so, like, uh, speaking of lesbians, the whole scene where, like, Selena was trying to flirt with her and be all up on her so she could steal the phone with her, like, I get it and what it was for. But I also don't think Batwoman would ever, like, fall for something like that. Is Batwoman smart? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I don't know why that question is. <laughs> Isn't she just I like I don't know why I like that <laughs> Isn't she just like a Marine's daughter or something like an ex-cop like, She's an intelligent woman Like she has skills That I feel as though In terms of people and just like Again, she said she's a soldier, like a marine girl, like. And don't they always fall for it, like the, <laughs> the hottie? <laughs> not no, cause not this one. She already got her lesbian girlfriends. Well, well. <laughs> well, that's true. Exactly, and not too many can stand in front of Selena. That is also true. You know, I like actually kind of like that they were kind of playing up this thing, and we'll get into the synopsis in a second while we go through the movie. But I like that in this, they kept having her say in the beginning, um, you know, uh, hold on to that or I'll steal it from you. <laughs> and it made me realize that she has stolen a lot of things from people because, again, like, mm-hmm. this was stolen. I'm just at a whole <laughs> girl. I'm still thinking of you asking if she's smart. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Okay, but yes, no, stealing stuff. She does steal a lot of things people. I will say one thing I did appreciate about this uh, little movie is that they showed that Selena can fight. Like, it was very much... They did. They did. And, you know, you and I disagree sometimes on her ability to fight, but they showed that she was able to hold her own. You try to argue with me a lot about what she can do. Yes. Yeah. True. Yes. But, like, Selena is a trained martial artist, and, like, she has sword fighting skills and all these things, and I'm glad they really did Cheshire show. Cheshire was beating her ass, though. Cheshire. <laughs> I also... mm, she was cool. You know you like Cheshire. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay uh, if Selena oh, get her ass beat a little bit. What I've noticed, though, is I feel like they've, like, slowly kind of turned Black Mask into a Catwoman rival. 
I thought that too. I didn't realize that he was so like, I don't know, a part of a part of her world. But I just maybe that's something that's more recent. <laughs> been around like all the time lately. Like again, even in the comics, he just popped up there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, but I think that's really nice because I think kind of Batman's gotten to a point where he's probably not thinking about Black Mass in the way that he should anymore. So mm-hmm. he probably should be passed on to somebody else. He might be a. Did they try to make him like a Gotham Sirens villain? Because I know he was also um, in the Birds of Prey movie. Maybe he's a Birds of Prey villain. And Catwoman also gets to use that. Oh, he was in that movie. Oh, I really like that interpretation of him, too. They were good. I liked it, yeah. So maybe I like Black Mask. This movie kind of made me realize I, I like kind of a good villain. When he... Um, when they were trying to like get to Batwoman and they were like, oh, we can't get to him. She's like, got the guy in front of him and he shot him and was like, there, now, go. Yeah, was like, yeah, <laughs> Black Max is cool. Um, I also, I didn't like a lot of the voice acting in this though. I actually thought it wasn't too bad. I liked it. <laughs> no, I just didn't feel it. Like if it felt like to me, a lot of it was stiff. It felt like people were like reading their lines. Okay. Well, let's go ahead. Let's get into the the plot of the movie, and then we'll take it through, and we can break this down. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the movie opens with Catwoman infiltrating this costume party um, that's being held by Barbara Minerva. Um, everybody knows her as Cheetah. <laughs> and uh, in order, who's at attendance there is Black Mask, who is trying to join this group Leviathan, which is this uh, crime like syndicate that Minerva leads. In order to get into the group. Um, Black Mass has to deliver the cat's eye emerald to her. Catwoman, of course, is here to steal the cat's eye. Um, but, of course, there's, like, all these shenanigans goes on. I thought there was some pretty cool, like, flipping stuff that she was doing. Um, again, this was very anime-influenced. Um, it was, Like, even the music that they were using whenever they would come in during the action scenes and use a lot of horns and stuff, it felt very... It felt very, like, jazzy, didn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, I also didn't like that it really took me out of the scene. Like every time the song came on or like the music played, I was like, when did we get to like, I don't know, whenever they played a lot of jazz. <laughs> yeah, that's more of a, um, an anime thing. I did, I did like the intro to the show though, or the movie. And like that little okay. influence of it, I thought that was actually pretty cool. And I thought the designs of Selena and it was nice. Yeah. The jazz stuff is very like cowboy bebop for those out there who are into anime and stuff. Um, but um, so she is trying to get in there, steal a cat's eye. She gets it. She tries to get away. Long story short, Batwoman shows up and um, basically stops her. Tobias White gets the emerald, and now Minerva has pretty much put a target on Catwoman. Mm-hmm. Um, now back on this plane, Catwoman um, regains consciousness, and Batwoman and some Interpol agents, uh, Julia Pennyworth and King Faraday, both pretty much tell her that Catwoman, you're going to help us get into the syndicate, and you're going to help us take down all of these people. Catwoman is obviously not about it. <laughs> she um, instantly is like, I'm not, I don't want to do this. But of course, she plays along because she, of course, is trying to get money to help um, the girls back in. Gotham. Well, I'm assuming probably Allytown. Right? Isn't Allytown in Gotham? Yes. Yeah, so like, yeah, back in Allytown. Um, she ends up flirting with Batwoman and gets this phone from her, and um, she finds out this location. Uh, Catwoman and Batwoman infiltrate this meeting place, but are end up being stopped by assassins, of course, Cheshire, and this girl, this new girl named Nosferata, which I thought it was funny when she popped up. <laughs> she said, they were like, who are you? And she was like, I'm Nosferata. I'm new. <laughs> <laughs> because for a while, like, Catwoman and Cheshire were going at it, and Cheshire was winning, and then Batwoman shows up, and then they were like, you know, it's two versus one. And Cheshire is like, you know, I can always have my backups too. And Nosferatu shows up. And again, she got your bat, I got mine. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, why? Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So all of them ended up uh, crashing into the meeting place of all of these Leviathan bosses, which are Black Mask, 
Dr. Zenzen, Master Yakuza, Lady Dama, and Moxie Manaheim. Did you know too many of these villains that were popping up? Because this, to me, some of these were like very random villains I had never heard of. That Lady Dama girl who was like some of those villains, those demons. I was like, um, yeah, I was. I, I, I didn't know this was happening. I was going through the archives. I was like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was like, where are your two appearances at? Right. Because <laughs> these were really, very really random. Um, and um, side note, from what I heard, this is supposed to be very, like, Young Justice adjacent. So because of the Cheshire appearance, it's basically like, this is what Cheshire would be doing when she's not, and like, young in Young Justice. Yeah. Mm. Um, so... Uh, the cartel bosses and Will are all defeated and arrested, but Minerva manages to get away. A Catwoman re- receives her pardon because she did her part, and uh, she shrugs off the threat of Minerva as to uh, poses to her life. Later, Catwoman is uh, being targeted by these League of Assassins. There's like 52 people that she counted up there. Well, that Batwoman counted. Um, and... They end up having this whole conversation of back and forth and stuff, which, I, again, I thought it was cool that Selena was being shown to use her, like, sexuality and her, like, feminine wiles on a woman instead of always just being, like, sexy and seductive for men. Um, so I thought that that was nice for <clears throat> Selena. What did you say? It felt weird. Really? That's your boyfriend's cousin. Don't be that girl. Oh, yeah. I forgot that was his, like, cousin. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, she's already pretty messy. I don't think she cares too much about doing... I mean... Is that really that beneath her? Yes, it is, actually. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, so Minerva ends up revealing her final form as Cheetah. We get the Cheetah versus uh, Catwoman square off. Cheetah ends up dying. And um, the end... That was pretty much the end of the movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> Catwoman pretty much like I'm sorry, not Catwoman. Cheetah like fell on these um this like concrete spike things and she died. So that was the end of that. <laughs> and uh Catwoman wanted to get the cat's eye back, but they wouldn't give it to her. Um and then she says she needs to go to London to pick up some things from the tower. I'm not sure what was in. There's something in London that is. Oh, oh, that's where the crown of, like the king, the queen in London is held. Mm. If I was more worldly, I probably would have known, picked up on that. But <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'm not. <laughs> you know, sometimes we stay local. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, I I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was a pretty good Catwoman um, outing. I'm an anime fan, so the animation style didn't like turn me off. <laughs> yeah. I um, it was cool. Like I said, I like the action scenes of it. I think the yeah. a lot of the voice acting didn't do it for me. So like when there were scenes of them just talking and being stilted, and like I think about that whole sequence in the plane. When like Selena first came up and like uh, Lauren Cohen's character, the Pennyworth girl, and like the guy came out and they're talking like it just was very stiff. But Selena was fighting. She had her whole little sword moment when they were um, when her and Batwoman were like going through the ninjas and they were like both counting off how many they were fighting. I thought that was like fun. There were some like weird things happening there. It looked like Batwoman was flying at one point, but I was going with it. Um, the Bat Lady, she was kind of weird. <laughs> 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 like, <Nice for> us. <laughs> that was just like a weird segment altogether. I didn't really know that came about. Um, it truly felt like someone really wanted to use that line of you got your bat and I've got mine. So, so they were like, Well, what bat could we give her? Oh, we don't have anyone, so let's just make one up. <laughs> <laughs> Made that up. Uh, she was weird, but she was there. Batwoman. I think I, I think I'm good on like ever seeing her again in anything in any medium. Yeah, I don't know. She's just not that interesting in the Bat Family, which is wild. There are a lot of them in there, but she's, she's just not like. like you. Mm. I like lesbians though. Not that kind. Ah, uh, 
<laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I feel like I'm I'm only ever interested in Batwoman when she's with Question. That's because I think I would prefer Question over Batwoman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't like I don't like Question either. So. Right, me neither. But if I had to pick one, I'm probably gonna pick Question. <laughs> and you know what's interesting? Because like when I remember when Batwoman's like stories first started, she was like fighting supernatural threats. Mm. And I think the only reason I like really stuck around the way I did was because Betty Kane ended up coming into the book and like. Mm. She, and like for those who don't know, Betty Kane is Flame Bird. She was a Teen Titan at one point in time. Um, I love her. And <laughs> I was just like, and she was also like in before like pre continuity. You know, DC's always going through its crisis. She was the original Bat Girl, but like the Bat Hyphen Girl, and her aunt Betty uh, was Kate Kane, and she was Bat One. Oh. Okay. So, but then, like, when the crisis and all that stuff happened, the continuity folded in, they brought her back, but she became Flame Bird. Um, I don't think she ever did, like, the Batgirl thing. Do you remember the Titans of Tomorrow story arc? In mm-hmm. Titans, she, she was Batwoman in that. And so, like, when she popped up in that Batwoman series, I was like, oh, they about to, like, make Betty Flame, I mean, Batgirl again, or, like, do something fun. She was going to get back into the Batwoman thing. No, they gave her like this ugly costume. She started, she had, she had these flamethrowers attached. It was just like nasty. And then Kate kind of flopped. And so it was just like, oh, well, this wasn't good at all. <laughs> Is Kate's lane like the supernatural? Is that her thing? I think they moved her away from it. I think she uh-huh. feels a little bit more like whatever else the Bat family does. Regular street level stuff? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, that probably would have been better for her. At least then she would have had something that was hers, the supernatural. Yeah, 100%. And which is, now that I think about it, maybe that's why they put, like, that lady bat Nosferatu in there. Mm. To, like, give callbacks to Kate and how she's mixed up in supernatural stuff. And La Dama, the, um, the Latina yeah. woman and who was, like, was stuff. Making her monsters. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. But Kate just doesn't do it. I don't know. I don't really like her costume. I like the costume. I think, the I think it's the fact that she wears the wig with the costume. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, is her face white or does she wear white makeup? <laughs> is that her face? <laughs> I thought it was like a full mask. Like she was like, <laughs> like she also puts on white makeup to like <laughs> look different so no one can find out her identity. I Am think, I wrong? I think- <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Do I know nothing about that one? <laughs> Excuse me. I think, yes, that is like a part of what she does, but I do also think she's kind of like a pale white woman. Okay. Got it. Yes. <laughs> but anyways, I like her costume. That's all right. I guess nice. I think the red looks nice with the black. Oh, yeah. That part's nice. I just don't like what's going on up here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What would you rate this movie, though? Um, uh, out of five? I mean, for an anime, it's... <laughs> Please. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's fine. I'd give it, like, a three. I didn't... Uh, maybe, like, a 2.5. Okay. I just, I'm, I just, the action was giving, and I guess that's the whole point of what these things are about. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, but like everything else, it was just like, eh. I will give it a three out of five. Okay. It's all right. It was a solid little, nice little Catwoman out, like, outing. I don't expect too much more from her than this. So. <laughs> <laughs> And that brings us to the end of the show. <laughs> yep. Make sure you guys please rate and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. A reminder again, we'll be starting our uh, comic book club next week with Thor. Um, so check back next week. We'll be talking about that. And um, also pretty soon, Ms. Marvel will be starting. So we'll be doing uh, watches of that. She's so cute. I'm so she excited. so cute. I saw her on her uh, promo train right now with the <laughs> premiere. 
so adorable. She like literally is Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like so excited to be in the MCU. She's like, these, she was like, I can like call these people. She's like, I got a picture of Brie Larson on my wall. She's like, now she's my friend. I was like, I know that's right. That's so cute. <laughs> yes, but please make sure you rate and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Um, we really appreciate all the support. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at and another relaunch you can find us on youtube if you want to watch us at on another relaunch tv you can find me on most social media platforms at uncanny lz keenan where can they find you you guys know you can find me on twitter and instagram at keenan lance as always there's an underscore at the end. Boom. all right so let's get up out of here we'll see you next week peace